Okay, so here's the string that's or spring that's providing the pull. Wait a minute, this isn't providing the pull. There's a coil spring back in here. You can't quite see it from there. Right in here. Sometimes that's providing the twist. I think I think it's this one. I think it's this one. And other times that spring in the middle is is providing a push along the shaft. I operate the on-off control. Okay, so that's off. On, off. On, off. So you can see it, it's kind of releasing, if you like, the uh, wheel. So it no longer is under pressure. And this is the on position. And this is the start. Wait a minute, I got this totally backwards. Okay, let's try that again. That's the off position. <laughs> there's the on position. And then there's the start. You can see that coat hanger-like piece there. It's not doing anything when you go from on to reject. But when you go off, it pulls it. It appears to be doing something else, too. Can you, can you see it rotating? If you look in this knee, right in here, see, see that in the rod? It rotates a bit. And then when you go all the way on, you can't quite see it from there. Let me just bring this up. This piece is almost interfering here. Right there. Gosh, it's got the speed mechanism associated with it, too. Hmm. Some piece of foam just headed south there. Mechanism working nicely. The speed one. And of course, there's no platter up there, so this this idler wheel is traveling a little farther than it it might otherwise travel. Maybe that's why I'm seeing interference here between this rod and the thing. This is definitely the spring that provides the uh, pull, and it is very, very weak. So we're going to strengthen that spring. Huh. Well, it's got a very unusual little clip down here. This piece in the middle here, which you would think is supposed to be down here in the hall. What's it doing up here? I don't know. Well, we'll take out the little clip here. Got some yellow corrosion all over me. That's not good, you know. That kind of powder and stuff comes off metal like this. Be careful with that. We don't know what it is. It's yellow colored. I don't particularly like that. So we're going to cut this shorter. Not too much. I'm going to ruin my cutters here. Cutting steel. Just going to bend the end the same way it was. Take a couple turns here and just bend it out. There we are. Put the yellow 
Ismo back in. Oh, he's come disconnected from the other end. Okay, no problem. Squeeze that back in there. Yeah, there are a couple of metals that you find in these things. Uh, one of them is used for corrosion protection on the surface of other metals. And uh, in doing its duty, it grows. And then that you get a powdery material you can get on your fingers. I don't think it's a problem on your fingers. The problem is we all stick our fingers in our mouths. And you start to eat the stuff. And that's where the problem really begins. I mean, it should just pop in there, shouldn't it? I mean, come on. I should have disconnected the other end because it came off so easy instead of this crazy bracket here. bending it in too. I don't want to do that. Holy smokes. Gee. Isn't that annoying? Hey, look, there's another hole. I could have just moved it from this hole to that hole. <laughs> that would have done it. Okay, let's get fancy here. <laughs> Not to be easy as could be. Now, where did it come from? For crying out loud. I should have made a note of where the other end in this hole here. There we go. It all seems pretty well lubricated. Now we know next time, if this didn't work, I can just move this to this, this next hole. And uh, hopefully we'll get, we'll get the right result then. Oh, almost lost that rubber. Locking ring. It can be tricky putting these on, as you can just see. Uh, you need to work this little piece up here. And maybe even work this piece a little bit. Okay, I'll make the idler wheel go under. There we go. Alright, record. Disco heat. Free. Put this back to thirty-three, forty-five. That's a uh, finer needle on the uh, lower speeds. You need the finer, final, <coughs> finer needle.
to uh, pick up these grooves. If you try the 78 needle, it's liable to ride way high on the grooves and actually skid around a bit. So, okay, switch is off. Power on. Speed to 33. And we'll turn it on without rejecting the record. There we go. Oh, it's going anyway. It's going anyway. Didn't go anywhere. Okay, now we might need to run this a few times to get it to loosen up properly. There's no sound at all from the other channel. I, maybe it was on 78 there at first. Disco. They've made it that time. So let's put it up on a higher speed so we'll go through the mechanism quicker. Swing the arm over here, it will replay the record over and over endlessly if we do that. With more speed, it's liable to make it through its mechanical processes better. And the music may even sound better. <laughs> just watching for the slow part rate in here. Yeah, just made it pass pretty good. We're going to do this a few times now. This player's got uh, four speeds, 78, 45, 33, and 16. 16 is not terribly useful. And it's still slowing down at that top spot. The question would be now, is it slowing down because of traction problems? Or is it slowing down because the motor can't push it through this. It's slowing down because the mechanism isn't lubricated enough. Oh, good, good questions. Let's put on a slower speed now. Let's see if it can make it faster. Here we go. <sighs> I've made it past it, but it was tough. Interesting observation. Look at the clearance between the record and this control. And there almost is no clearance. Isn't that something, eh? Oh my gosh. That was one of those things when they got the record player all designed and they built the first one, they went, whew, that was close. <laughs> That's incredibly close. Okay, let's try to reject on the control here. It should start over. It should start over out here. Okay, it's still struggling a little bit. Let's put it to the slowest speed. 16. 16 is not used for music. 16 is for voice and for recordings of things like uh, court procedures, uh, corporate meetings, stuff like that. Here comes the tough spot right in here. Right in here. Oh, I made it. Fantastic. I made it.
Hey, you know what? Hey, I think I just figured out how to get around the copyright problems here with playing music on these when I'm testing them. Play it at the wrong speed. You got the disco in slow motion now. If you're gonna do any dancing. That's my disco dancing there, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> By gory gosh, it sounds better. I should have always played disco songs at 16. And okay, just on the same note. Oh, that's got a good beat. My foot's are going here. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure there's much more we should do to the mechanism here. I'll let it shut itself off here. Let's see. Very good. Okay. So, on the electronic side, which is what we'll start next. That didn't, that didn't, that stopped a little quick. Yeah, I think we'll do one more thing. We'll take a look at the main bearing under this. Under here. I would expect it to be. Oh, it's way down there. It's way down inside there. And uh, it's as dry as can be. Now, how am I going to get at that? Let me take a look here. Usually they're just they're just below the surface. This one way down in there. You can see the uh, the ball bearings down there. There we are. You can also see the the gear drive and the notched portion of the gear drive sitting in neutral there, waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. Just maybe I can just reach down in there. That's about the driest one I've ever seen. Oh, look at that. That's terrible. That's really dried up. Gummy stuff. Oh, it's like particles. That's terrible. Now, there's usually a washer above and below these things. How come there wasn't a washer above it? Oh, how am I ever going to get that out? That's not easy to do. I got it. Are there two here? Oh, that's terrible. Again, the, the lubrication has gone into hard and it's broken into particles. That's like it just doesn't get any drier than that. I think there's another washer down there. No, it's not coming up. So that, I think this washer should have been on the top of this, of this piece. Because when we look in the bottom here, let me just turn this a little bit so I get a little better. It doesn't look to me like this fits in there properly. Yeah, see, I don't think this is actually spinning on the uh, bearing. I think it was. outside edge of it or something. 
Well, maybe, that's, well, maybe it's supposed to lock in like that. That fits just perfectly like that. And then it's really counting on running on the uh, bearings, on the ball bearings, and not spinning this. I think that's maybe how this one's done. Well, let's clean this guy up, because uh, he really needs it here. 